Hello everyone, this is Data Engineer One, and welcome back to another video on writing data pipelines with Kedro. I know that in the last video I said that we would cover writing a basic node and basic data set, but I figured today's video would actually be a little bit more helpful if we covered how to use Jupyter Notebook with Kedro. Now, if you don't already know, Kedro comes with its own Jupyter Notebook plugin, which allows you to get access to the Kedro context as well as the data catalog. And the Kedro context and data catalog, if you don't understand what those are, we'll be covering those in just a moment. Now, if you also want to use your own Jupyter Notebook and not the Kedro Jupyter Notebook, I will also show you how to do that as well. First, let's go ahead and get started by starting up our ASCII Cinema so that you guys can follow along at home. Then we're also going to start up a TMUX session just to make things a little bit easier for us. Now, in order to start a Jupyter Notebook, using Kedro, very simply, you go into your Kedro project, type in Kedro Jupyter Notebook, and sit back and wait for a few moments. Make sure you have Jupyter installed on your machine using pip install Jupyter, as well as make sure that you have matplotlib installed as well. Now we've opened up a normal Jupyter Notebook, as you can see. And traditionally, we keep notebooks inside of the notebook folder in Kedro. Now, if you started up Kedro Jupyter Notebook, you'll notice that instead when you click on new, rather than getting a Python 3 or Python 2, you actually get access to Introduction Kedro, which is actually the project name. This uh, signals to you that the notebook here is not a normal Python notebook, but actually gives you access to the Kedro context as well as the catalog. Now, I keep saying Kedro context and catalog. What actually is a context? And what is a catalog? Well, the context actually contains information about the current project, the current Kedro pipeline. It allows you to access the pipelines as well as the nodes that are available in that pipeline. So you can, for example, type in context.pipelines and you'll receive an entire list of the pipelines that are available as well as all of the nodes within each of those pipelines. And as you can see here, this is our default pipeline as well as our DS and DE. If you'll recall from the previous videos, the default pipeline is actually just a combination of the DE and DS pipelines. And that the DE pipeline only has the split data, while the DS pipeline has the training models prediction and reporting accuracy nodes. Now, in addition to the context, you also get access to the catalog. Now, the catalog is actually one of the most powerful features of Kedro. It contains the entire set of data sets that you have access to in Kedro. So if you go to catalog list, you'll see all the data sets that are available. And as you can see here, the example iris data data set is available to us. And if you'll also recall from the previous videos, this data set is specified within the configuration files of the project. We can actually take a look right here. If you go to config base, and right here inside of the base, you'll see inside of the catalog, this example iris data set that we are referencing here in the catalog. So the catalog right here is automatically fed this catalog.yaml file. And you can see here it's an iris data set that comes in as a pandas data frame, as well as a reads a CSV file from here, this file path. So using this catalog, what you can do is you can do catalog dot load, you type in the data set name that you're trying to look for, and voila, you immediately have access to the iris data set. Now, so what's really great about this also is that because you're pulling this inside of your notebook, you're actually not hard coding any paths. That means that if you want to move this CSV file around, all you have to do is update your catalog and your notebook will work in just fine without any change to the notebook. This is one of the benefits of Kedro. Okay, so now that we have this DF, what are we gonna do with it? Well, how about we just do a very simple visualization on top of this DF so we can show it in the notebook. And then in the next video, what we'll do is we'll take that visualization and we will uh, output it into a proper data set. So for this visualization, it's just gonna be a very simple scatter plot. Make sure that you import matplotlib.
create a, a subplot. And then we're going to use our data frame. So as you can see here, we have a few columns, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and then the species. How about we create a scatter plot that just does a simple petal length and petal width scatter plot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it by species. So we're gonna say species, df, df, species, when the species is equal to setosa, we're going to do a scatter plot, the x being the petal length, y being petal width, the label being setosa, the color being blue, and the axis being the axis. We hit this button here, and as we can see, oh, we actually can't see but we'll see in a minute once we do the other three. So instead of Satosa, we're gonna do Virginica, only red, Virginica, and we'll do one more, which is very, very color, I believe. The Versi color. Great. So now we have the axis. Let's go ahead and plot that figure. And actually, we're going to set the size of the figure 12 by 12. We're going to save it back to our local directory like this and then opening up here using tmux we can just go ahead and open that fig and voila as we can see here we have setosa virginica and various verse color and their petal legs properly plotted in this scatter plot very simple. This wasn't meant to be a Jupyter Notebook a tutorial, but rather just showing you how you can access your data using Jupyter Notebook and Kedro. Uh, the final thing that we'll do here is I will show you really quickly how to access this notebook um, if you are not using Kedro Jupyter Notebook. So let's go ahead and, and save this notebook really quickly. Save that, and we're just gonna stop our Jupyter Notebook with Kedro. These guys are going to lose connection. Two, three. And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually open up the normal Jupyter notebook right here. And we're going to find that our original notebook is not going to work, of course. Instead, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to be able to access our catalog and context. So as you can see on the right hand side, I actually have the code that we need to use um, for this portion. Here we go. So if we do from kedro.context import load context. So what you want to do is you're going to load the context based on the file path to your project. In our case, the root file path or the root project is right here in um, the uh, uh, parent directory, uh, which is going to actually be in my machine, um, home directory code slash introduction Kedro. And then the catalog is actually right there contained inside of the context. So you should be able to do context.catalog. Bada bing, bada boom. This should load the context. And as you can see, we have the context now, we have the context.pipelines, and then you can run the whole thing one more time. Okay, and that's it. So uh, in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take this plot 
creation notebook that we made, and we're actually going to turn it into a node. And then with that node, we're going to put it out into another data set and actually make it such that when we run our Kedra pipeline, we'll be able to get a copy of this figure every time. OK, thank you for joining, everyone. Take care, and I hope you guys stay safe in this season.